In this video, I'm going to be showing you about sinusoidal models. So we're going to be looking at the shapes of graphs. Now, um, in the trigonometry section, I'm going to have a whole bunch of videos going into this in very big detail. But for right now, let's just do it really quickly. Let's look at what uh, the graph of f of x equals sine x looks like. Sine x. We also have f of x equals cos x. Now, we normally put it in parentheses, right? So sine x and cos x because it's cosine of x. Um, I think it really helps to have an idea what this shape looks like. So this one right here, let me just draw this as x, this is y, so is this right here. Let's look at what a sine graph does. So a sine graph starts at 0, 0. Let's make my y nicer here. It starts at 0, 0 here like this, and it goes up, and it goes back down, and it goes back up again. Keep in mind it goes forever, right? It keeps going like this right here. I'm just trying to draw like the first period of it. Now cosine, see, it's still sinusoidal. It still makes this shape. Cosine does the same kind of shape, except imagine this one here was just moved over to the left. So in other words, it starts off here. So at x equals 0, y is 1. And then it goes like this, like that. That's like the first period. And of course, then it keeps going like this, just like it keeps going like this. OK, so this is the shape. By the way, that's why you'll notice this. This is awesome. What is this? Look at the stop sign. Get it? Because it's a sign graph of a st Oh, that's actually so brilliant. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. All right, so stop sign. This is what, okay, we have a graph of sine x. Now it helps to know um, a little bit about the um, x values here. This right here is 360 degrees. So this right here then must be half of that, so it's 180. So this must be half of that, which is 90. And this must be, let's see, 1 times 90, 2 times 90, 3 times 90 must be 270. And it goes up to a maximum of 1 and down to minus 1. Same thing up here, 1 minus 1. This value right here, this first value right here, this is 360 degrees. This then must be 180. Half of that must be 90. Half of that between 180 and 360 must be 270. There we go. Now, we have to define a few uh, things from this. We'll look at these in just a second here. But um, yeah, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll do it right here. I'll actually define it right here. We have a thing that we call the amplitude, which is this height from, do you notice it's like this right here is called a principal axis right here. This right here is what we call a principal axis. This is where this thing oscillates up and down evenly from this axis here. And this value right here we call it the amplitude. Okay, so what's this? So from here to here, for example, it's also the amplitude. All right, that's important. We have something else we defined from this. It's called the period. So we could define the period from here and going here and going to here. I always think of it as copy and pasting it. If you like just copied and pasted this like in Photoshop and you you know you copied it first and you pressed it paste again, it would continue the pattern really nicely. See if you just did this and you pasted it again, it would go like this, wouldn't it? So that's actually why I think this right here, we define this right here from here to here as what's called the period. Now, did you know the period can also be here to here is also the period. So from a max to a maximum is also the period. From a minimum to a minimum is also the period. So from max to max here is a period. There's a few different ways of telling it, okay? From the minimum to the minimum, we some people call them troughs and crests. doesn't matter. But we have these generic ideas here. These are the generic features. So let's do um, what we would call a general form of this. There's two different versions. One is for sine, one is for cos. So I'll write it like this. I'll say a times sine of bx plus d. And we can also have it with cosine, by the way. Same thing. Okay, so once you learn what some of these mean, these are really helpful. Oops, not sine. Cos of bx plus d. Let's look at some of the features of this, because those are going to be the important parts. So we've got this one, and we also have this one. This is a generic sine or cosine graph. So what's the meaning of A? Let's look at that one here. Okay, so A is the amplitude. So this feature that we just saw before on the graph there over here, that's this amplitude. In this case, amplitude is 1. Do you notice the number in front of sine is just a 1? So hey, look at that. Now, we're going to have something called D right here. D right here, that's the vertical shift. In other words, 
Uh, let me give you an example here. Let's say we did something like, um, let me give you an example. Maybe I'll say like, if for example, D equals one, that means up by one. If D equals like, I don't know, minus three, that means down by three. That means the whole graph would be like up or down by one or three or whatever. That's the amplitude. And the important one though, well, the, the more complicated one is B. B is not equal to the period. This is one of the more important things, okay? So B is not equal to the period, but it's close. So watch the period. This is actually something you'll have to memorize because it's not in your formula booklet. And it's really important, okay? The period, oops, I don't know why I can't seem to make my eye go above the eye. There you go, boom. Period equals, um, it's 360 over B. This is actually something you should memorize. Maybe I'll put it like this. This one here, I'll say, memorize. Okay, so this is this one. And we also had this vertical shift, that was D. So there's the meaning of it, okay? So we have A is the amplitude, B is not the period, but it's close. We have this thing D called a vertical shift. Same thing, by the way, if you do it with cosines. Let's do a quick uh, version of this one here. So if we look at uh, Y equals sine X plus two, well, what's it gonna look like? It's gonna look just like a normal sine graph, except the whole thing has been shifted up by two. That's what this plus two means, remember? Because that's a plus two over here. So that means it's gonna look just like a regular sine graph, except it's gonna be this, we're gonna call it the principal axis. That's the piece I'm gonna need here. I'll show you what this is in a second here. This is when it's needed. It wasn't really so important when we had them, you know, just centered at the x-axis. But now that we've got it plus two, for example, let's look at what happens. It looks just like, so let me let me cheat here because of the powers of technology. Let me do a graph of sine x, like this right here. Except what do I do? I take this graph and I lift it up by two. So maybe I'll just define it like, uh, well, normally it goes up to one, right? So if it goes up by one, by two, something like that. There you go, it'll look like this. Let me do some labels here so I can tell. This right here is two. This is my principal axis. Maybe I'll define it in a different color here. This right here is what we call the principal axis, okay? Principal axis. So the whole graph is symmetric about this one thing here. So this is my symmetric, uh, this is my graph of sine x. Of course it continues, doesn't it? I mean, the graph keeps going forever. So I could actually keep it going and say, all right, well the graph obviously keeps going and keeps going like this. So we know the amplitude is still one, so it's gonna go up to three and down to one like this. We can know something about the period. Well, the period is 360 over B. B seems to be one, so the period must still be 360 and so on. Now we're going to be able to use our calculator for a lot of this stuff. That's why I'm going kind of fast through this. In uh, the trigonometry topic, we're going to go slower, take our time and learn everything there is to know about these things. But for right now, this is good enough. Let's do an example. By the way, this is the tides at the Bay of Fundy. That's why I thought, look, I would help, but my hands are tied. <laughs> Get it? That's such a bad pun. <laughs> So there's a place in Canada actually uh, has huge, huge tides. I think it's a place with the largest tides in the world. But in Canada, it's called the Bay of Fundy. It's uh, right near where my mom's family is from actually, in um, yeah, Eastern Canada. So the tides at the Bay of Fundy, they can be modeled by this. H of T equals 0.75 sine of BT plus 1.15. Notice we don't know what B is, ooh. That tells H of T is the height of the water in meters. Now that's the height, it's a little bit complicated. And I remember thinking like, how did they define this? You could define it based on some baseline or something. You could even call it the depth of the water if you wanted. So that's a little bit dubious and ambiguous here, but let's just call it the height for now. Height above what is a better question. Uh, T is the time since midnight in hours. So the first question is, what is the amplitude of this? Well, if you remember this, what I just told you, the letter in front is the amplitude directly. So that means that, well, what's the amplitude then? In this case right here, amplitude is just A. That's just this A term. In this case, A is 0 0.75. So the amplitude then is just 0 0.75, must be in meters. There we go, that was actually kind of easy, wasn't it? Now, the period is 12 hours, so they tell us that now, okay? So we're gonna have to use this, what's B? 
Well, you remember though, period is 360 over B. So let me use this, I'll say fine. I'll write it down, the period equals 360 degrees over B. I'm gonna use this equation. But now I know that the period isn't uh, just this, it's actually 12 equals 360 over B, because we're told the period is 12 hours. So because of that then, B comes up, 12 comes down, okay, so B equals 360 over 12. All right, so what do we do with that? Well, we could calculate it. So it's going to be, let's see, three would be 36 out of zero. So there you go, 30. So now I know that B equals 30. That's nice to know. All right, so that means now I can rewrite my equation. So watch carefully. I'm gonna rewrite my equation now. I think that's maybe helpful. So I'll say, so H of T equals 0 0.75 times the sine of, and instead of B, I put in 30 T plus 1.15. This is gonna be the kind of key to doing the rest of it, I think. So this right here is, is my equation now for it. Okay, so this is, this is my equation. So how high will the water be at five o'clock in the morning? Well, it helps to think about how we deal with that. Remember, T is time since midnight. So since midnight, T is actually just five. Whew. Okay, that actually wasn't so bad. So T equals five. So what do I do then? I say H of five is what I have to do. So the height when the time is five is just gonna be, let's see, 0 0.75 times the sine of 30 times five all that plus 1.15. That might be a nice way to do it. Um, I mean, you could go ahead and calculate it. In fact, let me do that now. So I'll just open up my calculator here, and let me just do it like this. So I'll say, all right, so it's 0 0.75. Make sure I'm in the right mode here. Now, if you're HL, you'll be changing modes a lot. If you're SL, just leave it in degree mode. So 0 0.75 times the sine of, let's see here, it's gonna be 30 times five close bracket, that's good, all that plus 1.15. My answer then is uh, one point, can you see that's one point, what's that, five, two, five, so I'll say 1.53, three significant figures. So roughly 1.53 meters. That is my height there. All right, now comes the interesting part, I think. In the first 12 hours, at what times will it be 1.7? It's a little bit more complicated because you're trying to set your height equal to 1.7 and it sounds complicated. I think the best way to do this is to actually graph it. So let's graph. We're gonna graph two equations. We're gonna graph y equals 1.7, because that's what it means to be equal, right? We want 1.7 to be the same as all this. So I'm also gonna graph y equals my equation there. 0.75 times sine of 30t uh, plus 1.15. So instead of t, of course, I'll make it x. Because my calculator doesn't like t's, but it does like x's. Maybe I'll make it x. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna do the graph of that one. Let's see here, I'll open up a new graph. There we go, and I'll just try to put this in here. So 0 0.75 times the sine. It's getting slightly annoying, but we can do this, huh? 30 times x all that plus 1.15, boom. Now, I want this in the first um, 12 hours. So do you notice then this one right here? It goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up again, and then the first 12 hours, where is that? You want to send, uh, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so somewhere up here, right up there, right? this is 12. All right, so if this is 12 right here, I have to draw that, don't I? So I'm gonna to try to sketch this graph. Let me see if I can here. So the sketch looks something like, let's see here. Uh, instead of X, maybe I'll make it T, just for, make it nicer to look at. This is H of T. That's really what it is. That's the Y and the X values. And the graph went like this. So it starts off at some height. And in fact, we know that height, don't we? We found the height was actually, um, Oh no, we don't know that, but we can figure it out. But anyway, it starts off at some height, goes up, then down, then up like this, right? So I'll draw it like this. So it goes sort of up, then down, then up, 
and down like this. But in the first 12 hours, this is the important part, in the first 12 hours, it's gone up, then down, and then back up again only a little bit. So it's only like here. Like here, it's like at around 12 or so, something like this. And I need to also graph, remember, I need to graph y equals, so I'll put a tab here, 1.7. Boom, this graph crosses it as well. So you notice, and I'm just going to look at where that graph crosses this. So that graph right there was a red one, let's just say. So I'll make it like this. Something like this. Okay, so this one right here was a graph of, you know, the curvy one. That was the sine one. And this here was 1.7. It's this one. So the whole question is, how many times do they meet in the first 12 hours? They don't meet up here. They don't meet that third time because at that third time it's way over here. Notice that's at like at 14 or so. So in the first 12, they only cross twice. I only want these first two. So I only want this one here. This is the harder part of this question. This one and this one are the only two points that I'm looking for. So I'm going to ask my calculator for those points. I'm going to ask it for that one and for that one. Let's see if we can do this. I mean, there'll be T, although my calculator will call them X's. Let's just see what I can get here. So I'll say t equals, and it'll be an approximate, and I'll get a second one. Let's see what I get here. So I'll get two different answers, right? I'll get this one, and I'll get this one. Let's see here. So the first one on the left, let's see here. I'm going to ask my calculator for that by doing menu. I'll do analyze, and I'll say intersection. Intersect left and right. Here we go. So do you see it's 1.57? So I'll put that down, and so it's roughly 1.57 hours. And the other one, let's see here, I go to analyze, do intersection again, and it's uh, here, so it's 4.43 as my x value. So t is 4.43 hours. Now you could have just said that was your answer, okay? So you could say t equals approximately you know, 1.57 hours and t is approximately 4.43 hours. With the way the question is phrased, you're probably okay. This is probably just fine. However, if you want to find out like what time is it, because this is, this is after this amount, right? But this isn't really time in a proper notation. So let's be very, very careful. What is, what is 0 0.57 hours? Because we want this in minutes, right? So this is 0 0.57 hours. And we've got to figure out sort of what... What do we do about this? Well, it's going to be 0 0.57 times 60 minutes. So let's do that. So let's uh, actually try to figure this out. So 0 0.57 times 60 is how many minutes? Oh, it's 34 minutes. And similarly, 0 0.43 hours, what's that? Well, it's going to be 0 0.43 times 60. Let's do that. I'm just trying to show you how to do the answer uh, sort of more properly. So times 60, that's going to be, tw yeah, let's just say 25. So really, a better answer would be, let's do the real time here. So the t would actually be approximately equal to, let's see, one hour after midnight. That means it must be 0, 100, so it's like 1 in the morning. Um, and 34 minutes, you know, so it's actually 1.34 in the morning. And, I mean, we don't always have to write the minutes. We normally just go like this, right? And we can say the t is also approximately equal to 4.25 a.m. So this is even better, I think, this, this way of doing it like this. I think this is at least the, the better way to do it. This one right here, I would say, I'll say or even better would be this one. Okay, Even better is this answer right here. Okay, why would you ever care? Well, there's lots of periodic phenomena in the world. There's like annual temperatures go up and down. I mean, even the bicycle wheel, if you think about how its path is, at least its height um, over time, that is periodic and sinusoidal. So is a Ferris wheel's height above the ground. If you did that over time, weather patterns repeat continually. Tides like we just saw. So there's lots of different examples of sinusoidal.